fascism is saying I'm better than you are and you are shit. So basically the things that he portrayed, not portrayed, the things that he said about the hard techno shit, whatever, soulless, whatever, is basically a bit techno fascist. Hi everyone, welcome to another reaction video on this channel. Today's uh, video is gonna be about old generation and how they did educate or did not educate the new generation. It's like the logical part to to the video how the new generation and tiktok taking over techno and rave culture uh, to this video basically so you uh, wrote a lot of comments and i really like the discussion basically what you were saying the older generation feels a bit not distracted but disturbed by the younger generation that are like more concentrated on looks and like to portraying themselves filming themselves rather than to be there and like enjoy themselves i think there is a major lack of supervision from the old gener generation so every who wrote like comments like these like from software wolf 91 or Alistair Krulenke. I think basically there is a huge gap where people didn't educate the younger generation so the younger generation got to like self-educate or they didn't and so they're not really aligned with the principles of the techno scene basically or of the EDM scene. So that's basically for this video. We're gonna talk more about it in the following. I just wanted to highlight one more comment about Miss Bashful Trophy Wife. It's a music video reaction. So one guy E2M8 wrote something about like slut techno and that we should be ashamed to reacting to a woman uh, singing dick dick every day and she's a prostitute and how we can support it and whatever at this point i just want to tell you one thing on this channel so if you're homophobic or like slutophobic uh, you can leave this channel right away there is no space on this channel for you know some kind of hatred to any kind of person group you know so I think uh, E2M8 just, I don't know, like misused his internet access in his uh, church school, I guess. Just stop it, okay? And at this point, we're heading to the video that we're gonna react to today. And that's about DVS1. The new frontiers of techno with DVS1. So who is DVS1? DVS1 is an absolute legend. He does the craziest techno music. So he writes the best, not the best, but he is a very skillful producer and a good DJ. He's basically one of the OGs of Bergheim, still is, still performing there pretty regularly and is a very prestigious artist, okay? So that's the only positive thing that I could say about him because uh, besides that, he's a huge hater of the <clears throat> new generation and he tries to influence like or bring something new into the techno scene, but it's in his way in a pretty... I, I don't know how can I say it in a pretty snobbish way. So if we see, but so if we're talking about new generation, old generation, okay. <clears throat> oh shit, I need to log in here. Jesus Christ. So if we talk about old generation, new generation, so like let's look at his Instagram page. So his Instagram page basically saying, his Instagram page basically saying nothing. It's just enjoy right now. Okay, so if you're interested in the techno world and you get to DVS1, an absolute legend, you get to know anything. Because he's like, be there. Okay, that's the only thing that he has to say to the newer generation. Cool. All right. Yeah, the thing that he, re the a cool thing that he really do did or does is a slice. So that's a, that's a platform that he created. Basically, the DJ artists that are performing they can upload their set to this platform and the producers that are mentioned there, you need to uh, uh, sign up a list or something and they get like a distributed money from this DJ set. Basically cool idea, but from what I know, it, uh, it went bankrupt, so it didn't really work out. So he tries to have like his impact on the new generation or kind of using technology uh, for a good impact, but I think he would done a good, better impact if he would just like do more interviews and talk more to the younger generation you know because like with this amount of followers he i don't know what his impact is you know but let's see the interview with him right let's head in that's 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 my biased opinion i will tell you right away because i already know some videos of him i pretty much know his agenda towards like the whole tiktok stuff and the new generation or whatever and i have like i have my problems with it because i i you know techno is about wholesomeness and about inclu inclusivity inclusivity and i don't feel inclusivity at this point if you like telling some something is wrong but let's head into it so yeah you will see it by yourself so let's head out 
So, Hard Techno is making waves, but once experience, some start to find its soulless. What's your take on it? But once experienced, some start to find its soulless. Like for a lot of kids, let's say in the US, EDM when it was super popular, you know, all this really terrible EDM music that was popular 10, 15 years ago, that was the gateway to find better music for some of these people. But that was their introduction to the music. Right now, this hard, fast techno is that, it's the EDM of this generation, but they're, but they're dressed in an underground way. So everyone thinks that it's underground music, but it's not, it's EDM. It's actually pop techno and it's the gateway. So I, like I always said to people, I don't care that it exists. I just wish people would stop comparing it to techno. It's not like, I think and this is not an ego. It's just, I think for me, he just mentioned the word ego. That's where I had to tune in. So for me, first thing, he's really hard hating on EDM. It's shit music. Maybe it is shit music, okay? I, I wouldn't disagree too much. But why you have to, you know, label something that hard, you know? Calling it shit. Hard techno calling shit as well. And he needs to distinguish himself from that. Because he does real techno, not pop techno. Or hard techno that's a full-on ego thing if he wouldn't have ego he wouldn't care what the genre is called that the people call the genre you know but for him it's really important that there is a distinction you know even though he said that like uh, hard techno or edm back in the days were the gateways or like uh, yeah the gateways into a deeper understanding of music or like this culture you know so is it important that people know that they are underground or think that they are underground even though if they're not is this a matter of important I think what i do and the music i come from that's pure underground true techno this stuff is the the door to open to find this and i tell people like just grow, you know, wait a few more years, go to a few more club nights where it's 15 hours of this boom, 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 boom. From the moment the doors open, you get tired and you start looking for something else. And so it's okay, like, cool, it exists, but maybe five, 10% of those people will start looking for something different, maybe something deeper, something more soulful, something more, you know, real, and they'll find their way. So he basically called it also fake and not real. So the thing is, you know, there is like in him, I'm hearing not, not an inch of consciousness or uh, soulfulness. So, you know, in a wholesome way, in a holistic way, he described it perfectly, you know. He described it perfectly, but he doesn't feel it perfectly, okay. So you're getting with these uh, mainstream genres, okay, EDM, hard techno, you get into, you get open the door, you're getting into the, the scene of electronic music. And then you find your subgenres that you like, if it's like techno, real techno or, or jungle or whatever, or this all old school stuff, maybe, you know, and maybe that's, I mean, I think it's pretty beautiful. This, how you get into it, your first rave, you're like mind blown. You listen to this more cringy music, let's say from nowadays perspective, like me, you know, I listen to Emily Lance, like uh, Enrico San Giuliano and stuff, things that I wouldn't listen anymore today, but drops me into good nostalgia, you know? Now I listen more like to these kind of fellas, okay? And I think the way of your involvement of the of your musical taste through like techno, any subgenres there, is pretty beautiful and you don't need to hate to it because for him, you know, his face, facial description describes it perfectly, you know? No, he's like an old grandpa. He's like uh, in Gran Torino. What's the name of the guy uh, who played there? The cowboy. Let's see. Yeah. What's the name of this actor? Clint Eastwood. He's like fucking Clint Eastwood. Look at his facial expression, you know? Isn't it the same facial expression? So he's just like an old grandpa who's just like shitting on everything, you know? Even though he's kind of aware that there is a wholesome thing about it, but he does not point out the wholesome thing. He's just like, ah, oh, yeah, uh, you know? I don't like it. And I think the new generation doesn't like it either, you know? That's why his interview has only 43,000 views because nobody... Actually, the way he's like conveying his message is like just not, not appealing. You know, so it's like, it's okay that it exists. Just don't put us in the same category. Just don't put us in the same category. It's not my ego thing. It's just don't put us in the same category, okay? Are producing and DJs always linked for you? So I would I would actually argue that the separation of the two, you know, there's not many people I think who are actually capable of mastering. And when I say mastering, being really good and spending hours and hours and hours and years perfecting their ability. So I think, like for me, I grew up as a DJ. I became a producer later. 
Um, but in the era that I came up in, you had a very clear separation between those who were DJs and those who were producers, and you could earn a living being both. And the problem nowadays is you almost can't earn a living being producers. So uh, people who create good music suddenly get shoved into the spotlight of having to perform. And because of technology, maybe they can, they can technically perform. But I think the soul of a DJ and the soul of a producer are usually two separate things. Um, like for me as a producer, you know, it's something that, again, it's just time. I, I think it, it's just like my DJing, I've learned to speak as a DJ. I feel confident in how I speak as a DJ. As a producer, I think I, I need to spend as much time um, to perfect my ability to speak as a producer. So I think everything comes down to just time, experience, you know, positive, negatives, trying things and finding what, what your voice is in whatever way you choose. And the thing is also you, nowadays you have to be a content creator, basically, you know, you have to have the social media. I know there is like, yeah, producer, DJ, content creator. Let's put content creator into DJ kind of space because you need to be in the spotlight. And as a producer, you don't want to be in the spotlight, I guess. But you know, if you're an artist and if you're a producer, you are an artist. If you're a DJ, I think you're an artist as well. And a content creator, obviously, as well. Only that some people wouldn't say it's art. Yeah, I think you need to convince convey your message right you need to have a message even though if you don't like the spotlight you need to find a way to portray it just like saying yeah back in the days there was a clear separation i just want to sit in my booth and produce i mean you can do it but then you have to ghost produce for other people basically right but if you want to be an artist that conveys a message you know a nice message or whatever whatever message you like maybe it's like like miss bashful you want to you know like empower women with your sluttiness and stuff uh then you need to be out there and you need to be everything at once and i think it's overwhelming for an artist but that's the point where there is the clear separation of like the big people and the smaller people and it's no shame to be like smaller people uh, like in a smaller group or like to be like more the in introverted guy there's always place for that as well but djing becomes more an outgoing thing you know you are a star djs are becoming more stars like rock stars and stuff and i think it's not bad because we had enough of cocaine heroin addicted rock stars or like lean addicted rappers that are here in the camera that are representing their culture and now we have the djs who's representing the culture a culture that is not that still not that representative in the public space and what i don't think that's bad i think it's good for the culture so next question is as the founder of a slice uh, a slice we talked about it it's a dj platform somehow you stayed uh, on the healthier side of technology what clicked for you to bet on this concept i think uh the bet was miss <laughs> the best was missed because uh, it went bankrupt from what i know and what's healthy technology you know technology is just a thing if it's bad or good it's in the matter of the user at the end of the day right if you use tiktok for watching i don't know like rap news <laughs> rap news or like trash tv stuff maybe it's harmful for you degenerating but if you use it for news it could also be harmful because of fake news and stuff but you know if you use it as a source of information it could be positive right so well, you know i really have a problem with this whole concept of healthier technology or not healthier technology you know technology is just a thing and the healthy and un unhealthy way is just the way the person or the individual is using it right i mean you know technology is uh, a gift and a curse like uh, on one hand technology um you know, allows people maybe to cheat or, or get to places quicker without actually putting the work or the knowledge or the understanding. But then on the reverse, technology also uh, gives opportunity to people who maybe never had those opportunities in the past. So maybe somebody really far away can, uh, you know, experiment with DJing and producing who 20 years ago had no access to drum machines, synthesizers or turntables. But the, the negative is, of course, you know, now anyone can be a DJ, anyone can be a producer and use the presets. And you mentioned a slice. It's, it actually connects to your first question. The, the first question being, you know, the difference. So we're trying to rebalance the idea that uh, uh, not everyone has to be a DJ and a DJ plays other people's music. And without music, the dance floor would be completely silent and I would have nothing to give. So. Our hope is that somebody like me who earns money from playing other people's music, now I've given via technology an easy button so that I can do something good and pass some of my earnings back down to the producers. So I would put us in the category of like using technology in a positive way to impact our community. 
and give something back. Yeah, he, he put it better. He uses technology in a positive way. But from what I got, like the DJs are too lazy to put up the playlists. So the producers are not getting paid. Sad. Along the process of our success. The wall of sound mirrors your disagreement with the current dance floors. What there uh, was there any chance in the crowd? Was there any change in the crowd? Sorry, man. I... <laughs> yeah, I mean, for anyone who doesn't understand or know what the wall of sound is, it's 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 not even that it's a new concept. It's me taking a concept that I was raised on, and he... uh, so oh, sorry, I didn't explain what what the wall of sound is. The wall of sound is basically that the crowd doesn't see the DJ, basically. So the DJ is behind uh, huge uh, boxes, and he doesn't see the crowd at all. No, so it's the separation of the dance floor from the DJ. It's not like the normal dance floor where the DJ is up front on the stage, basically, or on the festival stage, and here is the crowd. You know, it's more like he's hidden. So the DJ doesn't see the crowd, and the crowd doesn't see the DJ. So there's a crowd starting to dance in random directions and not all, all, uh, you know, aligned to the DJ, right? Even before me, somebody else was influenced on probably going back to like the the dub reggae sound systems where everyone danced to this huge wall of speakers. The DJ was on the other side of the room or even behind the sound system. And, and the the vessel, the DJ for the music was not the focus. The music was the center and the sound was the, the way it was delivered and how it was felt. And so maybe it was just the right moment for me to present this idea again because it was like an answer to all the things I think are wrong in our industry right now. Because now, you know, the DJ has become the rock star. The DJ has become the center of the focus. The DJ is on a stage with bright lights and LEDs. And we don't matter. I mean, we are just one part. I mean, yes, we matter, but we are just one part. They're the ego talking. We don't matter. Yes, I, I do matter. <laughs> of all the parts in the chain that create the magic of the night. And if the goal is to connect everyone and bring everyone together, then the focus should actually be on the dance floor and not on some, you know, figure standing on a stage throwing heart signs and making, you know, dancing around like a clown. So I think at the end of the day, if we see techno or like this, uh, uh, a party, a rave, you know, as a cultural happening, right? It's basically like like a church event, let's say. <laughs> I don't know what's the English word, like a mess or something, where like Sunday you go to church or you go to a synagogue or to whatever you go, to a mosque, and there's like a high priest that is like basically leading this the ceremony, right? And there's always a need for a high priest to navigate through this happening, you know? If you think about like gospel church, for example, you know? They're all together singing or whatever, you know, having like this whole party thing i'm not really into gospel churches but i that's the thing from what i know sorry sorry if i'm wrong but there is the high priest who's like setting the tone for something you know or like in the church somebody is really the the priest is reading like the chapter and everybody has like a vibe for the next week i guess you know to think about it, some moral issues or whatever you know from the old testament or from the new one so that I think the DJ is our high priest in the techno world, right? That sets the tone for our mood. Of course, I'm not into like this whole uh, Instagram IG models uh, that are like super big now and pretending to be DJs. I'm not into this, but at the end of the day, the DJ is the high priest and he needs to set the tone. For me, yes, you have to be content creator. Yes, maybe you have to produce stuff, but you have to convey your message and you convey it on the dance floor, you convey it on Instagram, you convey it on social media. And that's important, you know, times are changing, right? The, the scene is growing and people need to be taken by the hand. Otherwise, the new generation will be like misleaded or like not supervised if you need to be supervised but not like aware of all the cultural nuances the dj would go outside and say yeah don't look at me and blah 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 you know but being outside and saying it not in this interview but i'm saying on a social media platform and still being that the rock star the highest priest people will listen to him but to this person i don't think that a lot of like new arrivals will listen to him because they won't see it there is no platform for it right so you need to work on your platform and you need to use your voice good right so that's like my whole opinion i think like djs are high priestess or have to be high priestess some people are keeping up to it and some people are not right i think that's a that's it's a whole new concept times change dram dramatically so it's really important that like the djs themselves get aware or become aware of their position what they are doing what uh, when they're doing it and how they're doing it
right? No, not to be a clown. Really, uh, they should be focused on the art, the music, and the delivery, and the people should be focused on each other and, and the connection of the dance floor and the vibration of the sound. So, to try to answer the question you actually asked is yes, I we noticed a big difference on the dance floor, and I think at first, for especially a new generation, they really didn't know what to do when they don't see the DJ. So it maybe took them a few minutes to reacclimate to their surroundings and think, but wait, what do I look at? Where do I face? What direction? Where's my space? But then you start to notice people turning around and facing each other. I have to say my favorite thing to do at parties is basically to stand in the first line and the first row, first line, <laughs> always thinking about lines. Yeah, in the first row at the DJ desk, but turning my back to the DJ. I like to see the audience while I'm dancing. That's a thing I really love to do. I really recommend you to do it. Uh, yeah, I know it can be like like a spotlight on you. Everybody watch, uh, looking at you and maybe give you uh, maybe a nasty look or whatever, but ignore it. They will get it and they, you start to dance. Imagine you're just turning around from the first row DJ uh, DJ desk basically and you're dancing with the whole club. It's an amazing feeling man So this you need to try out and maybe it's also <laughs> the humbling experience for the DJ and dancing into the speakers Because really the people will look wherever the music the physical sound is coming from The DJ doesn't have to be in that location the DJ could be anywhere as a clubbing, clubbing advocate, have you ever reflected on a hybrid between club and festival that would cover all your needs? At this point, you, I think you know that I am not a huge fan of festival. I don't like festivals, so let's see what he has to say about festivals. I still play at festivals and, and by no means, I mean, when I came out with my very strong opinion in this video for the School of House a couple years ago about festivals destroying club culture, yeah, and he still plays festival, and I tell you why, because that pays the bill, okay? You get in a festival, you get, uh, I think, five to ten times fee for a gig. So, of course, he's playing festivals, because he's real techno, underground. You know, it's not that I said festivals don't need to exist. I just wanted to make it very clear the separation of what a festival creates in our industry and, and in our community, in terms of, like, short attention spans, short DJ sets, you know, versus a club where art is created, where community is created. And, you know, people said, you know, I don't think uh, I'm on this side. OK, basically clubs are better. I don't like festivals, but saying that the festivals community are not made. You know, I've been to a festival this year, right? Extrema festival with camping, glamping, whatever. And I met people there that are every year coming there to enjoy like this whole festival thing with the DJs and stuff and met there basically so they met each year there right and they met the, and they got to know themselves there you know so it's kind of community building like a whole festival thing I think is community building if you're fucking camping with somebody with some random people next to your tent or whatever you go it's uh unvermeidlich uh unavoidable you know the word Unavoidable to get to know each other, yeah. So I think festivals are community building. Yes, I don't think that uh, festivals are doing art or whatever, and maybe they're not sustainable. But I think they're still good for the industry. Everything what pushes an underground artist who's struggling to pay his bills and has like a nice sound, a vision, or whatever, is putting into a festival and get the opportunity to earn ten times that much. I'm into it. And if like mainstream mainstream people or other people get to know it, you know some new fresh art i will always support it everybody who's getting famous and got, starts to earn money because of his skills and the work that he put in yeah, yeah i have to respect it and appreciate it right it doesn't even matter what his music sound if it's hot techno or not you know if you put the work in and you get a status shout out to you but you still play festivals of course i do because festivals also take up now almost 40 to 50 percent of our year of music so it's not that they can't 40 to 50 percent of their year of the music and what he didn't say 90 percent of his checks it exists i just wish there was a healthy balance and i wish artists and especially the audience would understand a healthy balance between you know festivals can be fun you're outside you're maybe in the summer all these things but if they destroy the ultimate culture that we're you know that supports community small uh groups of people uh, marginalized people, you know, all, all these groups that really thrive in the club scene, then the festivals destroy everything we work so hard to do. So I just think a healthy balance. 
I don't think that it's destroying. You no, know? if it's a festival, everybody is coming with fetish wear and this whole like uh, underground techno wear, pretty sexualized, right? Uh, I think it brings the the culture outside. It normalizes it, and isn't that the point? To normalize it, that people like you walk by in a harness in a festival, and nobody is saying, yeah, this faggot. Sorry for using the word, but whatever, you know. The slut, why she's wearing such a short uh, skirt or whatever, why she's wearing latex. This doesn't happen anymore, right? And if you normalize it, you did you did a favor. Why why is it doing harm? You're bringing the safe space outside and makes the outside is more safe space than it was was before, right? So I don't see like a real problem in festival. Besides, it's not comfortable to sleep outside in a fucking tent. Once one not affecting the other so much, uh, and you know, again, the the crowd understanding where their money goes. And understanding the value of supporting community and artists versus just the entertainment of a festival. What is underground nowadays? Oh shit. So you know, okay, somebody might look at me and say, ah, but you're so underground. And I would even argue and say, I'm too successful to be underground anymore. So the difference is, is that I carry the underground aesthetic. I bring the underground culture and energy that I grew up on and the values to my position of success maybe on a commercial level so i think there's two ways to view it you know like real underground i don't even know about maybe you don't know about it's not advertised as openly it's what you discover when you live in a city and you meet some people and they say hey do you want to come to this really cool thing in in some small warehouse with a hundred people that's the true underground yeah that's true that's the underground and he's only talking about the underground for 40 years ago or 30 years ago and that's the whole, whole setting. The new underground is built today by the people of today. Couldn't say it right. And a lot right of times forward. also, that's where some of the most creative energy is made. And yeah. then somebody discovers it in the mainstream and then they bring it there. And then maybe they bring it to the bigger stage. And that's the all repeating cycle. Super underground, somebody takes it and it's made mainstream and then it falls down again. And then the underground pulls another ace of spades or another trump. But I, I think there will always be an underground. Rightfully said. So I think you got the whole message of this video from him. You know, I feel like uh, he's not educating enough the people, the young generation, or is not vocal enough in his message, or he doesn't have like the right message, you know, to convey that. So I think he's just old and washed. So that's my personal opinion. Legendary DJ, super good producer, really nice DJ sets. But I think, you know, the scene doesn't need people like that, to be honest. The new scene. I think there is uh, there's a need for supervision. And that's what I want to do here, basically, right? Even though I don't think that I'm the old generation because I'm way younger than him. So I just uh, really think that uh, we need to remember that techno scene is about inclusivity, about peace, love and harmony. And there is no peace, love and harmony to say they don't do right, they don't dance right, they don't look in the right direction. I don't want to be a clown or whatever. That's not inclusivity. In fact, that's even fascism. Because fascism is saying I'm better than you are and you are shit. So basically the things that he portrayed, not portrayed, the things that he said about the hard techno shit, whatever, soulless, whatever, is basically a bit techno fascist, right? And that's my opinion <laughs> to, to him and this video. So please write me in the comments what's your opinion. I'm really interested in uh, what you say about this one. Leave a like, share it if you like it. Uh, if you like it, share it to your friends so they can join the discussion. It's basically, I think it's a really important thing, you know, like to get out of uh, out of the way this whole generational conflict that is in the techno scene. So yeah, I want to be more wholesome about it. Every new arrivals are wel welcomed. And yeah, we'll show you, I'll show you around. There's no problem in that. You're good as you are. Just come here. We we good people here, right? So yeah, leave a like, subscribe, share, and see you in the next video.